Hey everyone, guess what? <laughs> I have a light, finally. Looks a little bright now. How's that? I have been hesitating to buy one of these cheap little lights, but <laughs> obviously I need one. So I have it now, it's clipped to my laptop. Um, I know you're not supposed to talk about all the behind scenes <laughs> magic that goes into uh, filmmaking. But anyway, I've got a little light up here now. So um, yes, Daryl, evidently we are. Welcome everyone to the live stream. Uh, I think we, we have about 25 people and we'll wait for, you know, some more people to get on. Uh, as you join, I wish you'd just go ahead and hit the like button and then you won't even have to think about it later. You won't miss it at the end. I'm going to be talking about what's going on. And also, I just, there is some, you know, every time things look not so great. Um, oh, I'm now live. YouTube just told me. Uh, then there's always some, when you have a garden, there's always something that's just, hey, look here I am and I'm so pretty. And this is the first time this has happened. This I believe is called a speckled begonia. And it, I just noticed, where is it? Wait, I lost it. Oh yeah, here it is. Look. It's blooming indoors blooming indoors i am so stoked as they used to say i'm so excited because i that's the first bloom i've had in my sunroom you know i've never had i never had any house plants in my california house <laughs> uh, because there wasn't enough light uh, by a window the big window in the back had a deck over it. So there was nothing, you know, no light coming in. I had a little bit of light in my kitchen window better than I have here. And uh, uh, so I could put, you know, some little something in the kitchen window, but I couldn't have any big plants. Now I've got this whole big window and they have, even though the sun kind of goes over that way, it doesn't come back here. It, it hits off of the ground because the ground goes up, I guess. And so they do get a fair amount, they have gotten a fair amount of light in the sunroom. I, the one good thing that I have done is everything in here has been repotted and rebooted with some blood meal. And uh, I've got all consistent pots now. They're all the same color and uh, kind of a green, dull green. Well, you saw it, the, the color of the leaves of that. So anyway, I have two of those because I got two cuttings from my friend Linda when I was traveling across the country in uh, November. She sent me back with an aloe plant, which is very slow growing, but it's still alive. And I used the aloe plant on my burn on my leg, which by the way has, um, you know, it completely healed. If you're wondering about my burn on my leg, it was bad. It was like a, a, uh, an intense second degree burn. Wasn't quite to the level of third degree burn, but it was altogether, it was probably about like that on the top of my thigh. And it has really shrunk down and, and a lot of it has disappeared, but there's like this core in the middle that's like deep red and I'll probably have to live with that. Anyway, that's all, all for that. So I've got two of these begonias and inside is mostly just succulents, you know, um, and a couple of cacti and, and uh, mother-in-law tongue and that sort of thing inside and the uh, holiday cactus, all that sort of thing. I, I just kept in the house because I figured why take it outside and get the brutal heat and the sun and, and everything this summer and then risk losing them and they're doing well in here. So just leave them in here. And then when, uh, when it starts getting cold, I'm going to have to do something with the three citrus trees and the passion fruit, which are out there, and the cardamom. 
So we may have to crowd it all in here. I don't know. Anyway, we have 65 people. Thank you for joining. If this is your first time joining my channel, my name is Kay. I have been an urban gardener for eight years in Los Angeles. And now I have just completed my ninth growing season. <laughs> well, in California, I was growing all year. It was so much fun to, to go out and make videos. There was always something blooming. In January, I had, uh, what were they called? January, February, March. In April, I had um, the beautiful plants with the dark, shiny leaves. We were trying to think of it the other day. Can you believe that? And I couldn't even think of it. Camille camellias, thank you, uh, camellias. And um, I don't have any camellias here, and I wish I did, but I don't. So as it turned out, the rhododendron, I didn't realize it, acacia was in the rhododendron family because I decided that one of the things I'm going to be talking about in this is the surprisingly hot, dry weather. And I know a couple of people warned me about it in the spring, but I thought, oh, come on, you know, they're just, it's just going to be like a few days and then it'll rain again because it's Tennessee. But no, <laughs> no, you know, it rains a bunch and then it doesn't rain. And, uh, and that has really finished off my garden, which is part of the reason for the title today. Um, 81 of you are here, so welcome. Uh, please hit the like button. And uh, if you've never joined a live stream before, then um, welcome. I'm in Tennessee now. I was an urban gardener for all those years. And this is my first season in a gardening in a seasonal climate. Uh, so it's been really interesting. It's been a real education. I mean, I knew I was in for a lot of changes, but um, I really didn't. <laughs> I really overextended myself. So um, that's, uh, and a lot of people told me I was doing that and not to do that and I did it anyway. But I, I, I just did that. So anyway, <laughs> welcome. And I hope you subscribe, follow my journey. My, my channel has always been, if you followed me for a long time and you go all the way back, I always covered the, the positives and the negatives. You know, um, I won't say successes and failures because I believe in gardening. And, and I think Wendell Berry said that, or, or maybe it was someone else. I'm getting confused, but that there are no failures in gardening because it is the lifetime. It is the education of a lifetime, gardening and farming, because you're always learning. You know, there's more to learn because pests change, you know, um, People were telling me, uh, who was just telling me? Uh, Daryl, we, we, we were just talking, uh, who, who's not far from me. And he was just saying that he had also heard that the army worms, which are these vicious, vicious caterpillars <laughs> that destroy your corn and destroy your tomatoes. I mean, I can't tell you how many but tomatoes. I went down the row and, and this... Big old brown, ugly. I don't know why when they're yellow and black stripe or something, they're so pretty. But when they're brown <laughs> and, and it's like got the whole head and the first two or three segments stuck in your tomato, sucking away. And you just, oh, gosh. Well, that's when the scissors come out, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um so anyway, we have suddenly 101 people. Thank you so much for joining. I would love it if we could get up to 200 people today. This has really been uh, a challenging week uh, for a number of reasons, um, but uh, which I can't even, you know, list <laughs> between the, the dry weather, the pests, and uh, the fact that I spread everything out in this garden and really didn't, you know, I don't have irrigation. And so I just thought, I really believed wrongly that rain would be my friend when I needed it. And, um, it, and, and then of course there were things that we didn't get to that I wanted to get to. And so, um, you know, I was just sitting here this morning, not, I don't, I don't feel that well today. Uh, 
just kind of fighting a headache and, and tired and cause it's been you know, just a long stressful week, but um, I was just sitting here thinking, Oh, please rain. It, it had, it had 60% chance of rain from 6 a.m. on. And I just thought, oh, please rain. <laughs> and someone said, well, you know, if that's if it drops down to 50%, that means it's like 50-50 whether you get rain at all. And I'm going, wait a minute. I never thought of it that way. I thought if 60% meant a lot of rain. You know, I thought 50% was a middle amount of rain and 60% was more than that. And night and hundred percent was like just solid rain for the whole hour. You know, my, in trying to interpret my weather app, which is of course dumb, but you know, that's what I always just thought in my head. You know, if it was hundred percent rain, oh gosh, from that 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. It was going to be pouring the entire time. It doesn't work like that. So I was waiting, you know, I just, I just did not feel like going out and hand watering. And uh, it takes, it takes four hoses, uh, 200 foots and um, wait, it's, it, it's, it's um, 250 feet to my lower garden. And the, water pressure from the, we put, we put in the PEX line that went down from the cistern. It, it only has a drop down the slope of a, maybe, uh, I'm just guessing 10 to 15 feet. Could be a little higher, I guess, a little steeper, but that's not enough water pressure to run a, an oscillating. I got one of those oscillating sprinklers, uh, because, Normally, I would never use those. On, I, I mean, I would never use those on cucurbits or tomatoes because don't water from the top. You're just asking for trouble if you water those vegetables from the top. So I never water tomatoes. I only water tomatoes from the ground level, either with a wand, one at a time, walking down the row, which I did many times, or um, you can do a drip tape, something like that, if you don't have irrigation, which I don't yet. So, I mean, trying to irrigate this place would be a, a major expense. And I actually don't even know how I would do it because, like I said, things are so spread out. So I was, <laughs> we had hooked up, I think it was three or four hoses. I, two of them were 100 foot, I know, down to the lower garden uh, because there wasn't enough water pressure at the lower tap. It's not a tap. <laughs> it's just, it's just a, a, the PEX line comes out of the ground. We never got the faucet put on. So, um, but there's just not enough water pressure down there to run the, the oscillating. So you would have to stand there and water this 15 by 50 foot garden, which was the last garden I added. If you're just joining me for the first time, I'm new on this property. This is the first year. How we developed it was first the raised beds, then we put um, an enclosure, a netted enclosure over the blueberries, the existing blueberries. And then we developed the uh, terraces, the ter which were pr primarily tomatoes. Two terraces, I planted 90 tomato plants there. And um, cranberry hibiscus, some borage, which amazingly did not do well. I could not believe it. In California, borage is like you plant, plant it once, you never have to worry about it again. It comes up big, humongous bushes that you have to chop back that get so heavy, they literally break off. And I had a tiny garden. So, you know, you get a monster plant like this in a tiny garden and you, you know, but that happened over and over. Here, I had at least four or five borage plants that I started from seed. None of them did well. Very shocking. Um, have some eggplant down there as well on the terraces. After the terraces, we developed the, um, um, actually, I think it was before we did the terraces. Now, I can't remember exactly, but we put in a very small vineyard with nine grapevines uh, and a deer fence around that. It's just a rectangle. Still needs the, um, the posts with the permanent wire. Then we did the um, 
flower garden, which is 20 by 30, which is supposed to be just beneficial flowers for, you know, pollinators. Um, but the deer ate all the sunflowers. So um, I had planted like a thousand seeds. <laughs> Whatever came up, they ate. So I put some tomatoes there. And then we developed the side garden, which you can see right here. Let's see. Oh, uh, there's a lot of drops of water right here on the, because it was raining. But this is the, that's the corner right there. And then I've got potatoes move. I've got potatoes in that mound right, right there. That's all potatoes. I just, <laughs> obviously that has to all be uh, fixed later. I'm just going to harvest the potatoes, see what I get, and then worry about what to do with that mound. I really need a tractor here is what I need because there's just one thing after another requires the use of a backhoe or, or something with a bucket. And um, if I could find a really great, you know, mid-size Kubota <laughs> for like, six grand or something, I'd probably buy it because, you know, this going to going to a Home Depot and renting a backhoe and a, and a, you know, and on a trailer and driving it here, me and my first pickup truck ever, it, it's, um, it's a little nerve wracking to tell you the truth. And it's their property and I don't want anything to happen. And, it would just be so much better if I bought one and I delivered it here and it was here. But anyway, that's all that's all a moot point right now because all the projects have been put on hold. Because of, uh, I, I'm sorry, I have not been saying hello to people. Um, and I see people are talking uh, amongst themselves, that's good. Jamela, Kathy is here from Michigan and Leroy Brown, Leroy Brown. Let's see, 100% oh, chance of rain means a chance of rain in 100% of the air. Wait, what? 100% chance of rain means a chance of rain in 100% of the area covered in the area of said forecast. Oh my goodness. See, I was totally wrong about all that. Southern Alabama Garden, BJ says, she's talking about the pests. And I was recommended, after I first mentioned the armyworm, I was recommended to use BT, which I had never used before, but it's supposed to be fine for organic gardening because it's just a bacillus that attacks the, it's not a poison. And since they devastate the corn, I got some and um, and we used it over here, but it was too late for over here. I really didn't, that's all down, it's gone. And covered, I, I, cho I, dropped, I chopped and dropped it and Justin covered it with hay. And so that's all done. And I, I learned powerful lesson growing corn there this year. So I will, I will make some changes before next year. And so anyway, just in the order of the development, then after we, de after we developed this, finally got the fence around it, um, we, we developed the 15 feet out of that 105 feet on the lower garden that was covered by silage tarp. You can go back and see, I covered all of this, this early work of developing these, these areas very well in my videos. And so you can go back and see that, how we, just carved it out of lawn. If you've got a lawn and you're going, gosh, I really should be growing some food. Even if it's like literally a four by eight raised bed, take charge of your food security, uh, grow some microgreens in your kitchen, do something, you know, so that you feel like you have a little bit of a control over your food supply in case uh, things do just go haywire which a lot of people are saying is going to happen. That's what kept motivating me to just press on and press on and press on and develop more and more areas because I have a huge 
front lawn and um, sun is better and just down the middle of it, but um, the soil is better at the bottom. And of course, when you're doing the hill, you really need to terrace it because uh, the, the, what was here, I had raised a few raised beds here when I bought the place last November, but they were not level. So if you were working, you could literally lean forward and fall your face into the raised bed. <laughs> so I thought, well, if I'm going to have raised beds, I want them level. And so uh, that's, a, that's, uh, that's the first thing we worked on after I hired Justin. So he did a great job on that. Um, but, you know, I had uh, all these other really big plans and I don't know, maybe you have, if, if you have an experience like this and uh, thank you to our moderators, Patricia and John. Uh, if you see anybody that, that has a, a reply to something I am specifically asking, if you could just put it all in caps, just that in caps. So I'll, I'll notice it. That would be great. And I'll try to respond to it. 157 of you. Let's make it. Let's get to 100 uh, to 200 if we can. That would be awesome. Welcome, everyone. Please hit the like button. Uh, if you're on mobile, you can click off of live chat for just a moment. Click Check the thumbs up and then check the live chat and come right back to where you were. That would be awesome. It helps with the analytics. Uh, YouTube winds up sharing it more if they see that people are engaged. Uh, so thank you so much. So just to uh, kind of finish that thought, and then I'll try to catch up with some comments. Jack is here from Phoenix. We were in touch today. I'm so glad because she's been working 10 hour days on her regular job. I have a feeling your garden has uh, had to have a take a back seat. R. Hayes, I have been getting to the point. Thank you. Um, the point is with all of this going on and with the drought that, uh, which has made me realize that I just can't, I cannot hand water all this stuff because it's so spread out and it's so time consuming. And I, I did too much that these projects that I was going to go ahead and launch into, I'm not, uh, not right now. Uh, I, I have, a trip coming up next weekend. My son is getting married and uh, I'm going to Montana. And so I just, I just put a hold on everything. So Justin's going to be doing some uh, work on his own. He has a, a nonprofit that he works on and I don't know what all he's going to be doing, but I just put a hold on. Um, I'm going to reassess the growth of the property because I had planned a greenhouse. I would love to have a greenhouse, but you know, that requires a mini bulldozer chopping earth out and, and lands, you know, building and money. And I don't know how, how much it would cost. And so, um, I was going to put in a patio. I was going to, um, I, I need desperately to do some, uh, some trenching before the rains come, the heavy rains, uh, because, you know, last winter it was just like a pond in here. So, but I, I just, I have, I've been doing too much. And once, once I got that, I'm, it's a big load off my mind to have a backup generator. I don't know if you guys have one. I recommend having some kind of generator, uh, especially if you're storing your food in a freezer you got to have some way to keep that food cold. That's probably the most important thing. Um, if you've got some kind of a heat source, uh, if the grid goes down for any reason, you want to be able to protect your food. And so, as you know, I bought a, an upright freezer and it's now close to being full uh, because of all the meat I ordered from uh, Thousand Hills Lifetime Grazed um, in, in uh, Minnesota which is the company my son works for. And they have the best protocols for grass fed lifetime grazed beef in the industry. So I know by ordering that, uh, that I've, I've got a good product. And so it, since it's just going to be me, unless my son and daughter-in-law show up, <laughs> which I don't expect that will happen. But uh, if they did, I'm prepared. Um, uh, and, and I wanted to be prepared. It was part of my my overall plan to be prepared if 
if one of my sons needs to come here and eat and live <laughs> or stay um, with some kind of a power outage or whatever, you know, food shortage, I don't know what's going to happen. So I have had to just pull back the reins and reassess going forward. And I'm, I'm going to wait until I get back from Montana, um, the 27th or something. I have to look at the count. 24, 25, 26. Yeah, 27th. I'm scheduled to come back on the 27th. Um, but I remembered, if, you, if you've been following me for a while, if you remember, after I had to sell the house and get all that done and went into the apartment, I was thinking briefly that I could continue to provide content by working in other people's gardens with Eric, who was my helper back in California. And that was that was something I, I was considering. There was a woman, you may re recall the woman uh, down in uh, Marina Del Rey that was looking for a raised bed garden in her little front yard. And we connected, we had a live stream. I think I had a video from down there. Anyway, uh, I remembered just a couple of weeks ago that she also has a house in Montana. So I let her know that I was going to be in the area of Bozeman and pray. Pray is where the wedding is. So, uh, and she reminded me that her teacher who has this fabulous herb garden and greenhouse is not far from where I'm going to be. And she was going to make some phone calls and see if I could come and shoot video. So if that happens, um, I might be even a few more days. So um, I have made arrangements for, yes, I still have all five cats. Got one begging right here at my feet. That's, that's my senior citizen, Lyndon, L-I-N-D-E-N. Um, she is, she, I've tried, because I'm, I am going to be away and they're going to be cared for by a friend, I am trying to get them on. Plus, these kitties don't need to be fed three times. They're, they're practically full size now, these kittens, and they don't need to be fed three meals a day. They're, so I'm transitioning them to two meals a day. And so uh, that's why she's begging down here. So I think I've answered, my, answered the question. Um, I've just had to pull back the ropes and reassess and see, you know, that, that backup generator, as I was about to say, that costs a lot. And um, they're not easy to get right now. So I was lucky to get one and I jumped on it. So this was one of the things I was warned about because Daryl uh, lives about 20 miles from here and uh, over a road like this. So it takes 45 minutes. <laughs> but anyway, uh, his power was out for a week uh, in March when we had the big snowstorm. And they, they said that snowstorm was like, they hadn't seen anything like that here in long, long time. So we had we had a real dumping of snow and I my car didn't leave the driveway. I have a Prius, so obviously my car didn't leave the drive, didn't even back out of the garage for eight days. So I was stuck here. Since then I've gotten a um, Colorado ZR2. Uh, so I can, I, that's not going to hopefully stop me. Although, you know, ice is ice and doesn't matter how big and tough your tire is. If you hit ice, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a problem. So anyway, he had the back, he has, I debated. I, in fact, I went out and bought, uh, just quickly bought a few months ago, a craftsman, a uh, gasoline powered, um, if I had to do it over again, and if, if I can give anybody a recommendation who can't afford or don't want to do the whole house situation, you can still get generators. Uh, they're not all available, but um, but I would recommend getting a dual fuel with a starter switch, especially if you're somebody like me and you don't want to be sitting there trying to crank this thing like an old lawnmower. So... <laughs> Actually, I guess they all still have that. <laughs> I just remember my father always trying cranking the the lawnmower. <laughs> but I saw my I, I fortunately have a great mower, um, 
and he he was I just he came yesterday, and uh, he was saying that his his crew from the summer two of them went back to college, and it took him two months to find a guy to help them. So it's not easy to find uh, work, you know, workers. You know, everybody has told me that since I've been here. Um, so that's that's what's going on with all that. So um, I was really looking forward to cooler weather too. I was kind of looking forward to fall, but you know, when you go out and you see your garden, it's all just like dead. <laughs> it's 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 like, is it over already? Gosh. Anyway, let's talk about squash. I think I've covered that uh, that topic. I'm going to be just instead of moving forward with projects, I'm going to be um, just decommissioning various garden areas, you know, cutting plants back, cutting back the annuals and just getting ready for cooler weather. So I still have um, winter squash. My zucchini's gone. I only had one big pot of that, three plants, that's done. Covered in mildew, covered. And, the, and so was the pot of cucumber, absolutely covered. And I did spray it. I sprayed it with a hydrogen peroxide spray, but um, I, I just waited too late. And it just, it, once it hits, it just, go, it just goes over so fast. Same thing happened over here. So uh, all the cucurbits everywhere is covered with powdery mildew. And it was just too much to spray. You know, I was able to, in my small garden in California, I could kind of keep the mildew under control, but I wasn't able to here. So I've got the winter squash out there. And what I want to know from, because I haven't grown that much winter squash. When do you pick it? How do you know it's ripe? I saw this video the other day and it's a, it's one of these, you know, it looks like a movie set, everything, the food and the plants and, you know, they, she plants the plants and they, and she comes back and they're all beautiful and perfect and there's no spraying and, and getting sweaty and hot and, you know, everything is just perfect. And then the, making the food and the food looks divine and the light coming in the window and oh my gosh, but she was cutting winter squash and she, it looked like, she was cutting it off of a living vine. And I always thought you just wait till the, wait till the leaves uh, die out, the leaves and the vines die out, and then you cut it and bring it in for, for curing. Does anybody uh, know the answer to that? The live feed is going in and out. I don't seem to have a problem on this end. Is anybody uh, else having a buffering a lot? Wow, I'm, I'm getting no indication that it's a weak signal or anything. I wonder how I could find out. I actually don't know. Before you start, you can, ch you can check your connection. But now that I'm on, I don't know where that, I don't want to do anything to stop it. Okay, TK says no problems. Rosie is okay. Okay, Connie, thank you. Huh. Lynn has, where, where are you, Lynn? Lynn's got it very clear, no problem in Trinidad. Nightly Rose. Where are you located, Nightly Rose? Okay, looks like about half the people are having a problem and half the people aren't. So, uh, Christopher, Christopher, where are you? Can you remind me? Leave a stem on your winter squash. What do you mean by leave a stem? You mean when I cut it, leave a piece? Is that what you mean? Uh, excuse me, I think I hear someone. Hi, baby. <laughs> That's BJ. She she heard me in here and she's calling for me. 
North Carolina, thank you. Uh, okay, good. Winter squash harvest. Thank you, Leroy. Let's see. When your rind is hard and before your first frost. Well, we I got a ways. For, I mean, I could wait another month if, if I was waiting for the frost. Got to leave some stem to keep it from rotting, right? Question mark. Um, what does everybody say about that? Because I remember that, you know, I haven't I haven't harvested a winter squash or a watermelon in since 2018. So I'm trying to remember, but I remember a watermelon has a little, it's called a spoon leaf. And I think the spoon leaf has to be dead or the, right after the spoon leaf is a little vine. And if that vine is dried, then you take it. Um, and I probably need that information ag again also. Oh my goodness, Linda Linda is planting raspberry and, and um, lingonberry bushes this weekend. So do you, when you plant them in, in the end of the summer, cause I did everything in the spring, what, what do you plant? And then you've got winter and they don't die. Keep as much stem as possible. So what, like that much or something? Daryl, when is our first frost? Have you checked that already? I'm sure you have. An inch or two of stem is enough. Okay, I will do that. Oh, pick when the good side. Well, so so the plant doesn't need to look like it's dying or anything, right? Because I have a really beautiful winter squash right about there, and it's bright orange. It's like pumpkin orange with green stripes like this. It's, you know, in the groove, I think, no, no, there's not grooves. It's not, it's not a pumpkin. And I, and I honestly can't remember what I planted. I was going to, after I took everything out, I was going to come in and take notes. This is one of my biggest failings as a gardener. And if I can give anybody who's starting a recommendation is take good notes because you won't remember, especially if you're older like me, <laughs> you know, I was just sure. I mean, I know. Butternut is so distinctive, and and that was one of the last things I planted. And I, I have butternuts growing. That I got those seeds from Daryl. One of one of them is like that long, and I thought maybe I should go ahead and harvest it. I don't know, but the thing is, I want to have them for a long time. And I think the sooner I harvest, the sooner they're going to have to be eaten. Even though butternut is one of the longest keeping, I heard um, squashes. So, it, yeah, me too, Haffy. Let's see. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you, Janice or Janice. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, the, fro the, the frost, you mean the frost zone of depth? Yeah, it's not very deep here, I don't think. So I, I, I was made aware of that when my water line was replaced and he didn't put it very deep. Well, he didn't put it very deep in, in the section that he didn't change. There was a section he didn't change and, and it was, I swear it wasn't, it, it wasn't more than a foot. It might not have even been a foot deep. So, okay, so I will have, for the, the next live stream, I will have hopefully some squashes to show you. I'm very excited about it because I, I have a winter squash video that did pretty well. And um, what I'd like to do, which I haven't done and I need to do is, I need to do a popular videos playlist on my homepage so that you can see what, um, what I've done that has done well. <laughs> And uh, 
one of the things that's done well is the video I did with Dar at Daryl's Garden. Um, his, the video I did at Daryl's Garden has done better than anything that I've done here. Like almost all the almost all the videos combined that I've done here don't equal the number of views that has uh, happened at Daryl's Garden. Uh, so I thought, you know, everybody loves Daryl and his garden. And so we went back and we did the pressure canning beans video. And he was very thorough and showed all the steps and everything, but not that many people watched it. So I think for the food preservation, I really wanted to do a bunch of those, but people aren't watching. So, um, you know, if you only get two or 3,000 views on a video, you can't afford to keep doing that. So, um, so I just kind of held back, but I've got quite a bit of okra that I've frozen and uh, I've got some tomatoes that I've canned. I wasn't able to can my own. I've got some tomatoes from my garden that I froze whole. And uh, I've done some ferments, but that has really been problematic. And I want to do a separate video on everything that can go wrong with fermenting, <laughs> because I think I've covered the gamut. Torrance, California here. Okay, butternut vines are drying up. Butternuts are small, but at least I have some. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate that. Hey, Steve Chambers in England, right? How are you doing over there? Uh, let's see. Yes, Kathy, okra is the hands down winner in my summer garden. When you look over there, you can't see it from this shot because it starts right about there, I think. Uh, there are two rows that are six feet tall. And I looked out there before the it 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 did finally rain hard for like off and on for an hour. Not that much, but at least it was kind of hard. So it'll get some moisture. But I, look, I looked out there at the okra before the rain hit and there were like all these flowers along the top. And I just thought, wow, I mean, oh, this is the okra. I don't know if, if, if um, Jack is still on from Phoenix, but these are the seeds from the Bradford okra seeds that she gave me that um, I think they come from Phoenix area. I'm not sure. Oh, good. That's good, Steve. Uh, let's see. Yes, I'm zone seven here, Leroy. Um, well, the thing is, they make it look so easy. I'm talking about fermenting. They make it fermenting look so easy. Um, but things go wrong, you know? I mean, Stacy makes it look so easy on Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. Uh, and I did it exactly the way that she did it in her video. Cause I looked at it, watched it again. I was at it off grid with Doug and Stacy and she, we, Doug shot a video that day with me in it and Stacy was demonstrating fermenting, fermenting peppers. And, uh, I went back and watched her fermenting pepper peppers video and, um, I did it exactly the same way. We'll see, that's the second round. The first round was tomatoes and hot peppers and okra. And the okra, I sent a picture to Mary at Mary's Nest and she said, it's probably yeast. I asked her if it was mold and she said, it's probably yeast, which is not dangerous, she said. But I thought, I don't really wanna eat that. It's not very, doesn't look very good. <laughs> so. Um, oh, South Carolina. Oh, good to know. So Jack just corrected me. She had given me the Bradford uh, okra seeds, but they're from South Carolina. No wonder they did so well. They are, they don't need water like everything else. I mean, they've got these big, strong leaves, big, strong stems, and I haven't given them a speck of water. Everything else is just like, like that. All the cucurbits are just wilted, covered in mildew. Those okra are like, look at me, look at me, showtime. <laughs> hmm. 
Oh, Leroy. You see, I didn't realize that. And now I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering if anything that I did is good. And see, I didn't want to smash my tomatoes down because they were softer tomatoes. They weren't, you know, nice hard tomatoes. And if you don't smash everything down, because you'll pop them, and then it's just going to turn to mush, I think. But if you don't smash them down, then the there's all this liquid on the bottom and they're floating up underneath the weight. And I, uh, it was just like, Oh gosh, I don't want to turn anybody against it. I think if you could get it right, it, it's the best because I ate some of these fermented vegetables at Stacy's and they were so uh, fresh and nutritious and such a great compliment to a winter meal of, you know, beans and rice or something. I mean, it just, you, you, you have this fresh, wonderful vegetable, in there. And also I wasn't doing it, but I, there was a company I found a small batch producer of fermented uh, sauerkrauts and, and other fermented vegetables. And I connected with her during the beginning of the lockdown and um, she would deliver at, to my door every Sunday and drop it off. And uh, I would just leave the money under the door <laughs> doormat. And it was great. And th those vegetables were great because when I was at that apartment, I didn't, it was tiny kitchen. I had a lot of stuff in there and I just did not cook. I really didn't cook, but that's how I stayed healthy is I ate so many fermented vegetables last year and I haven't at all here. I've got to find a source <laughs> because obviously I didn't do so well with it yet. Anyway, Kim, up to graph, up to graph, graph, up to graph. Let me see if I can make this bigger. Yeah. Now, uh, is new here. Welcome. Uh, please say, uh, give a welcome, a warm welcome to Kim. And uh, thank you so much for joining Kim. Please subscribe. Uh, let's see. Air is the enemy. Okay, well then I've ruined everything. Because what happened, Leroy, is... I, you know, the burping thing, well, I noticed that, you know, I hadn't burped the tomatoes. The first two things I did was two half gallons of tomatoes, my tomatoes, some of the best ones. And, and it was like, there's liquid coming down on the shelf. And I thought, oh, I got to burp, you know, so I set it on the counter to burp it. And it just kept bubbling up and bubbling up. And then... Okay, okay, so you're saying you can't have any air in it. I think they're all ruined. No, I mean, all the first ones. I haven't opened any of the last, uh, the pepper ones. So hopefully they're, they're okay. But you see, I bought the, I mean, um, when I went out to see St Doug and Stacy, uh, they, they had an arrangement for, I guess, an affiliate link or something with Mason Tops. So I had bought the Mason fermenting kit, but it only had five of those. I think they're called pickle pipes. And they have just a little hole. It's like a, a little rubber instead of the metal lid on the canning lid. It's, it's rubber of some kind, silicone, I think. And then there's like a nipple that sits, sits up with a little tiny hole in it. And so it lets out carbon dioxide, but it doesn't let oxygen in. I think is the way it goes. And so those ones are okay, but um, the ones that I had to burp, I think I ruined. Because if you're not supposed to get any air inside, I, I think I ruined it. So um, Nina is asking, yeah, so I didn't, I didn't have enough of those. Went to Walmart to get some more. They didn't have those. And they had ball, which has a spring in it. It's very different. You know, there's no weight. There's a corks, corkscrew spring underneath the lid with kind of a wire thing. And it holds the vegetables down. And then you, you screw it on. And then it has a little 
a little hole in the top of it that it lets out. So I haven't opened those or anything, but it's weird because it, it smushed the vegetables all the way down, like halfway down in the jar. I'm gonna go over all this on a, on a video. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. They all failed. You mean uh, failed at fermenting cocoa or failed at canning? Thanks, Sticks, for joining. I don't know if I'm way off. Kay, did you keep the brine above the veggies? Maybe okay if you did. It's a good question, Sherry, because on one of them, on two of them, I noticed that the weight slid down and the tomatoes went above it. But the but the brine was to the top because somehow I guess more what I guess you get more water or brine when the vegetables start breaking down when the tomatoes start breaking down because you know when I would burp it it would it would just like liquid would just come out and I had like a towel around it to soak it all up. I, so I, I, it was a disaster. Okay, well, I think that's what happened. Jack is saying you, the vegetables can't touch air. Well, so on the okra, I had a weight, but I really crammed those down in there. I because the okra are kind of they're pointed at the bottom and they're really pretty strong when you just push straight down. So I really packed this. It was a half gallon of okra and filled up the brine, put the glass weight on top of that. And then I look at it later, like two days later, and I see that the brine, the vegetables are right here under the glass and the brine doesn't start until here. So I opened it and I added some water. So that's probably what, what caused the yeast problem, right? I think those are ruined. I, I'm not going to eat those. I don't know, Coco. I'm having a problem. So, uh, Lynn, what are we talking about that your mother did? Uh, yes, we have 164 people. If you've joined me for the first time, please subscribe. That would be awesome. And... Uh, I am going to be decommissioning uh, garden beds, you know, cutting things back, pulling plants out and stuff like that, and um, harvesting squash. Let's see, we just got about eight minutes. So uh, what's coming up is I'm gonna be just dealing with decommissioning the garden for getting ready for fall. And uh, I, I've got, you know, lots of things to do in the house and I've got this trip coming up. So I'm not going to, I'm going to not going to launch into anything until October and see how, how the economy is and how things are going and how my, you know, how my trip went and all of that before I launch in, into anything else. So um, I have some winter squash to share with you. I can't wait to show you that. And you've already seen my okra because I've done the okra freezing video and uh, very proud of the okra. That did really well. And I'm going to, and I've taken um, a number of people's advice. I'm trying to think who told me. I, I know who it is, but uh, Hillary. Hillary. I think it was Hillary that, that said she does not. See, I took the long, you know, if you let okra go too long, doesn't it's too hard to to uh, you know eat? It's just it's too it's just almost like eating a hard loofah or something. It's really tough. And um, but you know this video, somebody shared this video with me, and I was mesmerized. And and you know it's got ten million views, so obviously a lot of other people were mesmerized by it too. And I watched another one from that channel. It's it's Chinese. And, uh, and there's like 20 million views. And I, I, I guarantee you some film studio is, is making this because the, every shot is gorgeous. Um, it looks like a movie and beautiful 
Chinese characters of titles on the sides and the food. Oh my God, you just, you've just never been so hungry as you'll be when you watch these videos because you see her in the garden and doing all of these things. And then you see her cooking all of this amazing food. And there's no calluses on her hands, as someone pointed out. I'm going, okay, how do you, how do you, no, no arthritis, no calluses, because she's young, but still, it's, it's interesting. So that's why I think, I think there must be a team of people around her, he, okay, ha handing her this beautiful bowl and this beautiful tray and this beautiful wooden spoon and this beautiful pot and this beautiful, beautiful bucket and this beautiful tool and, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, nobody's got everything like that. It just, you just don't, you just have stuff, you know, just tools from whatever. Every single thing in this, in this video is beautiful. But anyway, it was about okra. Somebody get, sent me this video, which featured okra and you see her planting seeds in, in uh, starter trays in this beautiful greenhouse with the, light, the filtered light coming in, big, long greenhouse, big, long tables of trays of, see her putting the, I don't know if anybody's seen this video, you can tell me, I don't remember the name of it. And, uh, and putting the okra seeds in, and then you see her building a bam herself, presumably, building a whole big, long bamboo fence. Daryl, you, you would love that. Um, the fence is, is, a stair stepped and I'm not, I'm not sure how it's supported. You know, it's, it's just, she just digs a trench and puts all of these pipes together and then ropes them together somehow. And they all stand up. And then, it, then she puts seeds on either side of it and all these beautiful vines of tomatoes and all these various things grow. So we see it later in the season and everything looks fabulous with this, Every, every, you know, she goes and grabs a handful of tomatoes and every one is perfect. You know, and it's just like, okay, <laughs> life is not like that. Sorry. But anyway, the okra, she would take okra pods this long and cut them like this, open, open them up, take out the seeds and the, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? The, um, the thing in the middle. <laughs> You know, like a pepper has the uh, the fleshy part in the middle. Uh, okra has that. You just strip that out, and then she would cut it very, th very thin with a, uh, an amazing knife, of course, on an amazing cutting board, of course, with amazing light coming in the window, and the perfect little sweater. Anyway, she, she's she's cutting it like this. You know, very, very thin slices, and then you see her later, and then and then it either gets steamed or it gets. Um, goes through the walk. I can't remember because so many things get steamed and go, going through walks. And then she puts the these okra uh, slivers on top of her salad with the perfect tomatoes and, and various things that she's, that she's uh, grown. And so I thought, wow, I never thought of using okra like that, you know, because I harvested a bunch of big ones. And I think it was Hillary, it might, it might've been uh, somebody else, one of my other fans said, they don't use the, the big hard ones. They just put them in the compost. And I had saved those uh, laying on my counter and I'd asked everybody, what should I do with these? Cause I, I didn't refrigerate them right away. Can I still dehydrate them if they're really big? And so um, they, they sent me this video because what she does on the bigger one, also on the bigger ones is she slices them like this. And she has this big table that, that eventually is every, this, it's going to sun on this uh, stone or hardwood table, or maybe there's a cloth on it. I can't remember. And she lays them all out, these pieces of okra. And then she comes back later when they're dry and she makes tea with those. Can't remember if she grinds them up first. Um, but yeah, I mean, like there's no food processor or electric teapot or there's nothing like that. You know, it's all, it, it, you, you feel like you're going back in time the way they did things in China back in the day, you know, with major, major uh, manipulation of the food, you know, just incredible.
So anyway, I could go on about that video for a long time. Let's see what else. Um, it is, uh, we got one minute. Let me see if anybody's got a question for me. Oh, that's great, uh, Janice or Janice, um, White Acre Peas. I am growing purple holes. That's in the lower garden. And I didn't really see peas yet, but uh, I got real bushy plants that survived the, so far have survived the pests. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And I'm just going to, I'm going to just grow them to dry them. You know, that's it. Yes, I'm going to have to order garlic. She's talking about planting garlic. I love planting garlic. I don't use that much garlic, but I love to plant garlic. And uh, so I should probably order gar or order garlic now. In fact, I was thinking, you know, there, there was a seed shortage. Was it last year or the year before there was a seed, sh seed shortage? And so I was thinking... Um, because I know that I had a lot of cross-pollination over the years with my seeds and some new seeds um, that were given to me, which weren't new, but which were given to me. And uh, I thought I should order the seeds I really like for next year right now and not wait. What do you guys think? Oh, so you know who I'm talking about, Jack. Yeah. Ah, I'm scrolling back to see if you've you've told me the name of it. I don't remember. Ah. Uh, that's good, Linda. You 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 need drip where you are. Fantastic, Jamila. Thank you, Coco. Uh, where are you, Kelly? I guess it depends on where you are. I mean, some people, I don't know if it's going to be hot enough. Okra likes the heat. Well, I, I just started seeding and um, uh, seeding turnips, but I did it in trays because I haven't prepared my bed yet. So I don't know if, um, wow, yeah, I don't have anything going for fall. Not yet anyway. Membrane, thank you. <laughs> uh, Let's see. Okay, so I don't see the name of it, Jack, but you, Jack knows which channel I'm talking about. She said she does have a small film crew now doing most of the filming, but she's very particular about the design of the scenes and direct directs the crew like I do. Yeah, if I had a crew, I would. I've never had a crew. I've only only shot myself. In all these years, I've done all the filming because I couldn't afford it. Uh, to have a crew because you never know when something's going to happen in the garden. And unless you've got somebody living in your house with you that you can say, Hey, grab the camera. You know, what are you going to do? And people have to book their day and, and people who shoot for a living charge, you know, you know, several hundred dollars and, you know, unless you were able to shoot a whole video in a day, which you could do if you planned it well enough. Um, but you couldn't do a, a video that goes over the seasons and all that, you know. But, hey, if you are getting 10 million views on a video that's only been out for a few months, she's making a lot of money and she can afford to pay a crew. <laughs> Order garlic now. Wow. Mm. 
Blissful Hearts Farm says, yes, get the seeds now. Thank you, Leroy. Thank you for contributing. Ah, well, see, I was given a lot of seeds, Kelly, and I didn't, I didn't, I ordered some cabbage seeds. That's true. Um, oh, wow. Okay. happy has gone. Thank you so much. Uh, and I'm going to be signing off as soon as order locally. Um, actually, uh, I have, I have that bag of seeds. Um, it's sort of like a, what do you call it when you buy a whole collection of seeds for the future and I put it in the freezer. So I wasn't planning on using those next year. I was planning on keeping them because it's a little bit of everything in there. I mean, I still have a lot of seeds, but now they're, some of the seeds go back to 15 and 16, 17, 18. And, you know, you almost have to start everything in trays to see what's going to germinate or maybe paper plates too. I've never done that. A lot of people germinate on paper plates or, or a paper towel. I mean, thank you, Happy. God bless you. Have a great night. And, um, and then, and then you can see what's germinating and, and take those and not waste, waste the time to put, you only plant out in the seed trays the seeds that germinate. I should really start doing that because I still have a lot of seeds. I don't really have to buy any seeds, um, but I do need garlic. Oh, Deborah, thank you so much. Are you talking about the thumbnail? Uh, because because um, what happened today, and anybody that has a channel can tell me if they've started doing this, but I just noticed in the last two live streams, or maybe it's just on this computer, I don't know, uh, that always, as long as I've been doing live streams, which is now two years, I guess, or three, maybe, I think I started... I started Christmas 2019. Yeah. So always when you set up the live stream and you push and you, you put the title in and the description, you push next, it, it immediately takes it. It gives you three seconds to da and one, two, three, and boom, it takes a picture of you. And of course it's never good the first, second, third time. And you, and you keep doing it until you get something. And so, but it's not, doesn't seem to be doing that anymore. It seems to be just asking you for an upload. So I'm going, oh, criminy, I don't have <laughs> what I wanted in my computer. So I was trying to do it with my hand like this, if you're talking about my thumbnail for this. So that's what I did. I just did it like that. Okay, morning glory, Jamie. Oh, <laughs> that's the name. I can never remember that. Lizzie is that how you say it? Or Lizzie Yes, thank you, Morning Glory, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. I mean, I was mesmerized and I'm sitting here going, oh my gosh, I could never make a, a film like that. I would so love to make a film like that. You can, But I mean, come on, who's got a piece of property like that? Who lives like that? Who has an idyllic, beautiful, I mean, she goes out to get her fish and the fish, just two convenient, two beautiful fish happen to be conveniently in the little basket that she dips down into the water with the little walk over bridge. And I'm going, this is like a Disney set. I mean, it is. Thank you. Who said I love my videos? Somebody said, I love your videos. Okay, Lynn. Thank you, Lynn. Can you remind me where you are? Because you just have Lynn on there. and I have a hard time remembering well, how did the light work out? Does it, can I get a review on the light? Um, because obviously the sun has dropped and the only thing I have in here are the sort of pinkish uh, natural light uh, grow lights that I, I, that I use in here when the season, you know, when it's not in the winter, it, I don't have that much light in here. And to keep plants growing, I have to have a grow light. But I didn't want to have things hanging from the ceiling and put holes in the ceiling and all that junk. So I just put grow bulbs in the fan, the three lights on the 
on the fan. But anyway, Lynn, um, I really appreciate that. I, I have a video that I've been shooting because because there is a new development that's that that is positive, and um, and I'll just for those of you who are still with me, I'll tell you uh, the eighty. Let's see, 15 from 105, 90, so let's just say 85 feet or so. The 85 by 50 feet of the lower garden has been planted. It got planted yesterday. And I actually did not, because I actually seeded it with a hand crank walk behind seeder. S E E D E R. When he first told me, I, I have so many cedar trees. I said, you have a cedar feeder. I mean, I mean a cedar planter. What do you mean? <laughs> He's talking about the seeds. You put the seeds in it and you hand crank it like, like a popcorn machine or something. And you walk around and it just shoots these seeds out everywhere up and down and around. Well, it happened to be, this thing happened to be broken. It had a little piece that was broken. So every now and then it would just drop a whole bunch. So, <laughs> But uh, I didn't get a shot of me seeding it because I was seeding and all I had down there was my cell phone. But I did get cell phone footage of the, the process uh, leading up to that. And this is this is uh, the the help that I received from my wonderful neighbor that I've recently uh, connected with. So I'm anxious to share that. And that'll be the next thing that I upload. So let's see. Little Farmer's Farm, Tony. Yay. Well, uh, May, that looks like a guy. Is your icon photo a guy, but it's May? Anyway, May, I think you can freeze seeds. Am I wrong? Tell me somebody if I'm wrong, because I did pop them in the freezer because I wanted them to last. I know you can you can put them in the refrigerator. Oops, sorry. Um, Denise is gone. Um, thank you, Tony. Oh, thank you, Rena. <laughs> what, what a funny name. Thank you. Uh, yes, in the Ziploc freezer. In a Ziploc in the freezer. That's what I did. I put the whole bag. It, it, they're in a foil. All the seeds come in a foil pouch. It's one of those food preparedness things. What do you call it? And they are local. They're in, um, I'm pretty sure they're, they're in North Carolina, I think, or South Carolina. And they came from a connection that I have, uh, a, a, a person that knows me. Um, it's a relative of theirs. They, they have a small family. Well, let me just go get it so you know. Hold on. I did pay for these seeds. <laughs> I did not get them for free, but I'm happy to give them a plug. And it has not been open, but I do have it in a freezer bag. And this is a foil, it's foil on the inside pouch with all the seeds inside it, you know. So it's a heirloom seed kit, 10,000 seeds, uh, new, and it's, uh, Made in the USA, 100% heirloom, Red Fox, organic, certified veteran-owned business. We appreciate our veterans. 35 seed varieties, over 10,000 seeds. And it wasn't that expensive. I'm pretty positive I, I ordered it through Amazon. Grow your own heirloom vegetables. So check it out if you're, if you're interested in supporting a USA ver veteran-owned uh, business. Um, I'm happy to give them a plug. And so uh, it, it doesn't say how long they'll last. Maybe it did on the, you know, where, where I ordered it. But um, I'm just hanging on to this for future, just to make sure I have it. Um, Daryl is gone. Linda. Oh, inoculant. I can't wait to talk about it. I'll talk about that next time. Oh, it jumped. Okay. I have a story about the inoculant. Uh, 
Well, Cass, uh, Garden Answer has so many subscribers that she doesn't need. Um, she she can she can control her own product. She can make she makes enough money that she can control her own product. You know, um, and you do turn turn a, a bit of artistic control over if you have a production company paying for it, because then they can tell you what what they want instead of you know what you want. So. She can do whatever she wants. She's successful enough to do that. I would like to be. That was my plan when I started. Uh, let's see. Good night, Cherie. I freeze all my seeds. Make sure they're completely dry. Well, <clears throat> the bag feels a little moist only because, you know, everything feels moist in the freezer. But look, I've, I've got all the air out. Is that what you mean? Jenny's because I don't know what else I can do. I mean, I could, you know what? If you don't have one of those vacuum seal things, you can put a straw. I don't have a straw sitting here, but you can put a straw like you can, you can press all the air out like that all the way over to the side. This is what I did with the beans that I froze. Uh, because I didn't have a vacuum sealer, and you know, there's a lot of air in between beans uh, that are cut into pieces. And I put a straw down like right there on the side, and I just sucked it out, and then it went like that. So I don't know. I guess everybody does that. I mean, I'm sure I'm not inventing anything new. I don't know that I ever had. Okay. Was that a no on the okra? Uh, it is an, if the, if, if you're asking me, if I said no, that you're going to get some okra, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's going to depend on, on how hot it stays for you because they like to be baked in the sun. I know they like the heat. So it depends on your zone, where you are. If you've planted it in a place that it's getting still a lot of hours of sun, you might. Oh, good. Thank you, Denise. Uh, thank you, Denise. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Rena. Thank you, Jack. His servant, thank you. Deanna, thank you, Lynn. Uh, South Alabama, thank you. Patricia, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Kelly. Please share my pre uh, my food preservation videos and get them out there because the more they get shared, then the YouTube goes. Oh, people like this. Let's let me recommend. Let's let's recommend those videos because so far they're just they're just not. Uh, it is not raining. We got a little bit of rain today, Tony, but not enough. Not enough. Not nearly enough. Everything is just baked. I went over to the back side of the bean trellis. Remember that little row of okra. And the dirt was so dry and it was, and, and there's no mulch over there uh, just because it just got crowded and I didn't get, I didn't have wood chips and I, I just didn't get any mulch. And the dirt was just like cracked, like deep, deep, dry cracks. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> yes, I do try to keep it real. No, 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 Janice, red crimson clover. It's going to be gorgeous, gorgeous. She's asking me, did I seed the garden with grass? Oh no, I didn't go to the trouble of killing all that grass to seed it with grass. I, um, I, am, I, am, I had a choice. I went to Haas Tools and they, they tell you, uh, they have a lot of, uh, of uh, cover crop seeds. Uh, and big, I bought, I bought 10 pounds <laughs> that would have easily done an acre. I think it does five acres, <laughs> but, but anyway, I, I had way, way more than I needed, but hopefully I can just put it in the refrigerator and it'll keep till next year. I think so. And so, or freezer. So, um, what was I going to say? So I'm growing it for green manure. And when it gets before it goes to seed, after I get to enjoy the blooms, I'm going to cut it all down with one of those blades. You're going to see me doing that. I'm going to cut it down with a blade. And then 
hopefully I can get my neighbor back over with his tractor and he doesn't have a very good disc though. He has a five blade, a five foot disc that's not heavy. So I'm not exact, I haven't figured out yet how I'm gonna get it turned over, but I got two months to figure that out. So, I, but I only have probably three weeks to figure out how I'm gonna protect it from the deer. I wanna put in an electric wire. Hey Daisy Joe, good to hear from you. Mylar bags, Mylar? What are we talking about? Hello from Ottawa, hey Betty in Ottawa. Ferments, you know, it, uh, fermented vegetables take uh, um, it take getting used to, but once you get used to it, they're so good. She got uh, um, is Karen right? The I am of me got 13 butternut squash off of one vine. My, my, I don't know if this is true, but do you, do you think like this big vine, this big squash vine comes out, it's got all these branches and then it realizes that the branch on number one branch, say for example, has a big thing developing and some of the other uh, branches just shut down production because so much is going into the production of that. Because this, this is a monster I don't know how many vines, because it all grew together. I don't know how many I actually have, but but uh, there's there's probably only a half a dozen, no more than eight of these monster, and I mean monster heirloom squash. They're supposed to be the Guatemalan heirloom squash. The one I, I, I got the seeds from was about this big, and it was pale green, and these are like peach color. So I, I don't know what happened. I don't know. It looks like a, I don't know what happened. It would seem that way, J-U-B-8891, but you know, we have to do all that we can to take back our food security. And this is what I've been preaching since long before any of this recent stuff happened to take back your food security. I mean, one of the first people that I followed was Vandana Shiva. And if you've been following me since 2013, I think I went to the National Heirloom Expo in 13 and 17, 2013 and 2017. And, and I met her in 2013 and I used a recording of her voice in an animation, a seed animation that I had my animator at the time. I had an animator and an editor and a sound editor. And I would very often put these short animations in my films, because in my videos, because I wanted it to be a show. I wanted it to be a small package that had, you know, an intro and an out, just like a regular TV show. In fact, all of those first 100 videos are on are listed i've listed them on imdb which is the international movie database so all of those are on there but then when youtube changed in 2016 all oh, that went away but anyway um vandana shiva was like somebody i was really following for a long time and of course i was aware of of a lot of things that were happening with seed and and monsanto and all of that stuff long before i started gardening in 2012 um, but um, so I have been preaching the save seed, save heirloom seed and, and uh, take back your food security from these big corporations and stuff for all these years. <laughs> and, and now it's especially important. So we have to be positive. We have to keep our head up, eyes forward and uh, as positive as we can and work as hard as we can. That's what I'm trying to do here. Um, yeah, Tony, that's a very good question. Uh, I'm going to be bringing my citrus trees in here. I'm going to be keeping all these succulents alive um, that I brought from California. Uh, and I'm going to grow some microgreens um, because Haffy, who's off now, but he gave me this whole big microgreen thing to, gr to grow microgreens and I never used it. I'm going to use that. It's like a, a set of kit. And um, I don't know what else. 
I don't know if I'll be able to grow anything outside. Daryl will be my guide because uh, he lives so close to me. So he, he's going to know what, what's possible to grow here. That's right. His servant. It's just, it's interesting because um, I, uh, I noticed that, you know, I was spending all this time shooting and editing all these work videos and stuff like that here, developing all this stuff. And then when I would just walk out with my cell phone and go, Hey guys, come on, I'm going to show you what, what, what the garden looks like. Those videos, you know, very off the cuff, those videos would do better than the other videos. So um, Susie, that's a good question. I don't recall that they did, but you know, I can contact them and find out. Uh, Susie was asking how the seller of the seeds, where'd they go, advised me to um, preserve them. Yes, Cass, you're, you're absolutely right. 90s. 90s is too hot. Uh, Vil Marie, hello from New Jersey. It's time for me to get off. Oh my gosh. It's already 25 minutes. I, I, I've gone way over. Let's see. I know, Tony. I know. And if I did, oh my gosh, I, I could be so much, uh, things would be so much better if I had a half a million um, subscribers. So help me get there, guys. Please share. Uh, very quickly, let's see. I just wanted to get to the end if possible, and then I'm going to get off. Uh, let's see. Yes, I know, Christina. Well, if you recall, I did two a month, and I had a lot of time to think about it and figure out what how to plan it and everything. And then I had people working on it that were professionals. And, um, but I was paying a lot of money for that. And I, everybody kept saying, Hey, you can't do that. You cannot do that. You can't keep doing that. And I did it for five years. And then I said, I can't do that anymore. Um, and I, and they were only between five and eight minutes long because my editor you know, she basically worked by the, by the minute of screen time. So, um, you know, if it was eight minutes long, she couldn't get it done in a day. So she would have to charge me for a whole other day. So, you know, they make between three and $500 a day. So you just, I just couldn't do it, um, anymore. Um, Tony, I, 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 I did arrange for a half of a beef cow, <laughs> Uh, from my, uh, she actually actually was the realtor for this house. Uh, it's grass fed and grain finished, non GMO grain finished. And um, after I bought my freezer, I started filling it up with vegetables and stuff. And then I decided to buy some meat to get me till November. I was going to get this in November. And um, then I just decided, you know, I don't eat that much meat, I'm just going to buy a supply for my freezer from Thousand Hills Lifetime Grazed, uh, which is Lifetime Grazed. And so that's what I did. Um, dairy farmer, there is, but they don't sell raw dairy. So I don't, I don't, I don't bother with um, pasteurized dairy. Oh, I see, get the manure. Yeah, uh, Daryl will know where to get manure. Yeah. See, I don't have a plow, you know, and I, I, I cannot, my neighbor won't take money and they're tired of eggplant <laughs> because the second time I offered eggplant, they go, no, we're, we're fine. And so it's the only thing I've had a surplus of is eggplant and uh, eggplant and okra have done well. So I, I don't have a tractor. I don't have a plow. So that it makes it tough to plow in manure. How many rabbits do you have, his servant? Because I do want to get rabbits. And I just haven't been able to take on any more responsibility, um, especially now because I'm cutting back.
I know, Daisy Joe. No, I'm going to. Well, my neighbor told me when as soon as I told him I was planning to to do red clovers, he says, "Oh, so you're going to feed the deer?" And uh, the deer are out here every day anyway. And um, and I actually <laughs> discouraged them with an air rifle. But anyway, um, he he recommended a certain way to do the electric wire that works. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, but the problem is it's 80 by 50 and that's going to require a lot of T posts, eight foot T posts, which are heavy. And I don't know that I can do that myself. So I'm going to have to, uh, if that has to be done, depends on you, we got a rain today. So, so it, we just got the seeds down yesterday and then it rained today. So I could have something for them to nibble on. Oh, before I go to Montana. So I don't even know if I can get it done next week. We'll see. Little Farmer's Farm, uh, go to, go to, um, gee. I don't, I don't know the answer to that, but I know that on Haas Tools, I know this is a Georgia, I think a Georgia company, but you can find out, Tony, um, if you scroll through his cover crop seeds, uh, and you have to click on them individually, though. There's not this thing uh, where it's all s spelled out, like this is good for fall and this is good for spring and da-da-da. You, know, you have to go to kind of each one and hunt and peck till you find it. But then there is a description of what's good for fall and what's good for spring. Obviously, red crimson clover is good for fall. Now that's what I'm doing, shell bells. You know, that's what I'm I'm trying to do now. Uh, Jan Janice, he is up in um, the UK. Okay, guys, thank you so much for staying with me. Gosh, for the I think this is the first we got more of these than we than we actually have at sign off. So thank you so much. Uh, yeah, Manchester, Manchester. Thank you. God bless you all. Stay safe. Um, be mindful of what's going on in the world. Do your research. Uh, it, it's hard to figure it all out. It's things are happening so fast. So uh, just stay safe and uh, try to grow your own food. Try to encourage people to grow your own food. Collaborate with somebody. If you can't grow your own food, share your property with somebody who's capable or able, you know, work it out, do what you can. God bless you. And I'll see you next Wednesday.